New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 33, Night 3, and Night 4 took place yesterday and today, respectively. So we're going to go ahead and break down these shows, talk about what happened, the results, and all that good stuff. So we're the almighty SOS Wrestle Talk. Be sure you like, share, subscribe. All that good stuff, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Price of subscription is free 99. So without any further ado, let's get into these shows. Let's get into these results, and let's get into the winners of this stuff. So the first show on day three, not the first show, but day three of G1 Climax took place in Yamada. Um, we had an attendance of 1,239 people. Pat on the back to y'all. Give yourselves a Barry Horowitz. So let's go ahead and get into this first match. Match number one, block A action. We had Kaito Kiyomiya taking on and defeating Chase Owens, him getting the victory around eight and a half minutes via the modified Shining Wizard right here. This was a pretty solid match. It was decent. It really was kind of paint by the numbers. Wasn't anything too bad of it. You know, Chase Owens is going to do his job getting his heat and whatnot, and Kaito Kiyomiya is going to fight back and, you know, show that babyface fighting spirit, and that's what he did to get the W. So Kaito Kiyomiya ahead of the A block right now. He has four points. So Chase Owens sitting on the record of one and one with two points. Moving on. Second match on this card, we had the Great Okan taking on Kenta, and Kenta actually getting a victory around uh, with the Hurricanrana roll-up slash little rope-assisted action right here. This match was pretty much a brawl. They brawled on a whole lot in the outside. A lot of uh, pretty much not hardcore spots, but a lot of like brawling spots using the environment to their you know discretion, to their will is pretty much what these two gentlemen did right here. Ultimately, I think Kenta was able to outheal Great Okan, get the victory. Pick up the first two points in a great old concept with a record of 0-2. That's pretty jarring. I, at best, I figured he would have been 2-0. At worst, I figured he'd been 1-1 at this point. But that's how the G1 goes. So I'm expecting him to go with a nice bit of a run. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll make that happen. Match number three on this show, we had Hikaleo taking on Gabriel Kidd. And Gabriel Kidd getting the victory here around three minutes three and a half minutes right here is pretty much when he got the victory it was very short match uh i think the ruthless side of uh, gabriel kidd him being so ruthless has been a fantastic addition not only to the g1 climax but to this roster at this point his matches feel like they have a sense of urgency about them uh, because anything can happen at any time uh he got a low blow and like i said leg assistic power driver to get the victory for himself pick up his first two points in the g1 climax he does he is very much against the grain of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think sometimes that's what you need, be it good or bad to some people. So, match number four, Block B action. We had Taichi taking on defeating Tonga Loa, getting a victory via the Taichi style ghetto clutch 37 in about 12 and a half minutes right here, setting up Taichi. He's Taichi's damn near rolling. He has a record of 2 0 right here. So, this was okay. It was a bit sluggish, you know, a, a heavy strike affair right here. Taichi, like I said, picking up his fourth points. This is probably one of the more skippable, ma skippable matches on this show, if not the whole tournament. So if you don't see this, you're not missing a lot. Don't feel bad if you don't. Then match number five, wrestling to a time limit draw. We had Ren Narita taking on Yoda Suji, and this match pretty much went how I thought it would go. I mean, you got Ren Narita sitting on zero wins, zero losses, and two draws. That's that's incredible. Um, you have Yoda Suji sitting on the record of zero, one, and one, picking up his first draw today. These both, both these guys have... One point from this match. Ren Narita has two points because he has, has two draws at this point. Uh, you know how this is going to go. Um, Ren Narita using his techers. Yoda Suji using a little, little bit of his speed, a little bit of his power. And that's essentially what we got right here. Went to a draw to my surprise, but I think we're going to see a lot more matches in in that draw scenario, especially towards the end of the tournament. So it's good they got these first two out the way. And I, with the people that they did them with, with all these draws taking place, it's very interesting with, you know, the new Musketeer label and all that good stuff. So match number six, block B action. We had Yoshihashi taking on Will Ospreay in a fucking banker right here. We get Will Ospreay getting a victory via the leap of fate. 13 minutes right here, a little hair under over 13 minutes if you ask me. I think that I think the official time they clocked in was about 13:04. So, yeah, this was this is almost this is stuff that you expect from Will Osprey, and Yoshihashi had a banger of a match himself. So this was this was good. This was really good. Osprey's on the board now with his first two points. So, moving on up the card, we had the penultimate match of the show, the IWGP. World Heavyweight Champion Sonata taking on and getting the victory over Shota Mino. He got the victory via the deadfall in about eight, almost 19 minutes. This was an okay match. I think these guys can do more in the future. I think they will do more. And I think that's the 
dynamic with a lot of first time matchups in G1. Sometimes these guys are going to go balls to the wall. And a lot of times these guys are going to maybe save a little bit for when they match up again, which either is fine. And I'm kind of glad that they did that because I think with maybe the not so much having chemistry with that you saw the Yoda suit, not Yoda Suji, but Shota Mino and Sonata have at this point is probably smart. So Sonata gets the victory, gets his fourth point on the tournament, sitting on the record of 2 0. We got. Yoda, or Shota Amino, excuse me, I always, damn, Freudian slip, suiting for a record of 0-1, one, one, one draw with one point. Then in the main event, we had Kazuchika Okada taking on and defeating El Fantasmo, getting his fourth point in the tournament, hitting the Rainmaker in about a little under 16 and a half minutes right here. It was crazy because we got, I don't want to necessarily say heal Okada, but dickhead Okada's in full effect right here. So he's pretty much indifferent. Uh, ELP was actually getting the lion's share of the chairs from the fans, so I thought that was very interesting considering he was in a match with Okada. It's actually a great visual. I'm glad that they're warming up to ELP. What's crazy is I think they always wanted to cheer him, but they just never could because he's in Bullet Club and he's acting like a dickhead. So now they're getting to cheer him full bore, and that's good, man. So night three was a solid night of G1 action. Um, wasn't the best at this point from the tournament. I would probably say you have to get out to night one. Maybe it's probably the best night so far. But night three wasn't bad. And it kind of just moseys us on down to night four, which took place this morning. And we had a very interesting match take place in the opener. We had block D block action. Shout out to uh, the locks. We had Toro Yano taking on Zack Sabre Jr. Getting rolled up in about five and a half minutes, a hair over. And the story of this match is Toro Yano had, yet, I think he'd only beaten Zack Sabre Jr. in one match. And I think that was in a KOPW style uh, encounter. So he he has a pretty bad record against Zack Sabre Jr. And that continued. And the next match we had, I believe it was, was it block C block action? We had David Finlay taking on in defeating Mikey Nichols. He got the victory via the oblivion right here. I believe the correct time was about nine minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, there was This was a, maybe a slower built match with David Finley taking a bulk of the control, getting that heel heat with a couple hope spots from Mike, Mikey Nichols here. But ultimately, you knew David Finley was going to stay undefeated, get his fourth point, and that's exactly what happened. So the next match we had, we had Jeff Cobb taking on and defeating Alex Cuff from uh, Coughlin. He got the victory in about nine minutes, a little, a little under 10 minutes via the Tour of the Islands. But the crux of this match was this match is really about Alex Coughlin proving that he can match Jeff Cobb power for power, strength for strength. Cobb did his fair share of power moves, but it was more impressive if you ask me that Coughlin was ever to stand toe to toe with the man that went to the Olympics, who's a strong man in his own right. So Jeff Cobb's continuing a hard, hot start. He's off to 2-0 with a record with a record of 2-0 and having four points. An impressive showing by Alex Coughlin. This is probably his best showing here in New Japan, especially over in the main island, if you ask me. Match number four, C-Block action. We had Evil taking on and defeating Eddie Kingston with everything is evil. He got that victory in about 15 minutes. And 15-15, uh, I was expecting more out of this match. This match really didn't come together for me. It's okay. Um unsurprisingly we get evil working a dirty match from the bell wow what do you know here so then you get eddie kingston trying to fight back but to no avail he takes everything as evil he did a good job trying to fight back but it just wasn't enough on this night evil picks up his first point first two points excuse me we got oh actually evil i take that back evil's two and oh with a record of four uh four points and eddie kingston's one and one he has two points right now moving on to the fifth match of this show, deep block action. Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on, getting the victory over Shane Hayes with the high fly flow. A hair over um, 12 minutes right here. It was a hair over 12 minutes. And this was maybe a paint by numbers match as well. I'm not just trying to just take anything away from Tanahashi or Shane Hayes right here. This is for largely a paint by numbers match by both of these guys right here. Um, he actually did Hayes got an early bit of control, but, you know, Tanahashi launched his rally, hit the high fly flow. That's what that was. And Tanahashi gets his first two points of the tournament. Moving on up the car. We had, I believe it's with this D block action right here. Is this, is this C block? No, nah, C block action. We had Hanare taking on and defeating Shingo Takagi. 
putting him away with 19 minutes and 38 seconds, just with seconds to spare with the Streets of Rage. And my God, this was a banger right here. Two strong dudes hitting the shit out of each other. That's what more can you ask for in a pro wrestling style match right here. And that's what we got. Hanari picking up his first two points. Shingo, surprisingly, sitting with a record of 0-2. So he's going to need to turn it around very swiftly if he want, wants to make any hay in his G1 Climax 33. So that is what that is. Then the penultimate ma uh, match of the show, the semi-made event, I almost called it the main event, the semi-made event right here. We had Tetsuya Naito versus and defeating Hiroki Goto, getting a victory via the Destino right here. Both of these guys run the ball, um, dynamic sequences. Uh, Naito, like I said, put it away with the Destino. This is probably one of Naito's best singles matches in a long, long time. If you don't even include the match from the other day, because that match was good too. But this match was right here was, mm, this is why I love Tetsuya Naito. It's why he's one of my favorite wrestlers, if not my favorite wrestler of all time. Then in the main event right here, we had Tama Tonga taking on and defeating Tomohiro Ishii with the J Driller, a little under 16 minutes right here. Honestly, this was kind of a standard Ishii match. This is what you're going to get from him. But I think this is probably one of Tama Tonga's better matches. And it's probably because he hadn't had a lot of time, well, maybe, you know, in the last few years to showcase his singles ability without being in Bullet Club. So I think this is a fairly good match for Tama Tonga. For Ishii, it was just a Wednesday. But the, hey, that is what that is. And that happens when you're so good as he is, man. So see if I can bring up a point total right now as we stand right here. So block A, we have Sonata with a record of 2-4, and four, or a record of 2-0, and oh, excuse me. Same with Kaito Kiyomi. Both of those guys have four points. Chase Owens, Gabriel Kidd, record of 1-1, one one, equaling two points. Then rounding out the block, we have Ren Narita. He has two points via draws, which is weird. Ren uh, excuse me, Shota Mino has one point. So does Yoda Suji. All of these guys have draws and, and also one loss, except for Renarita. And Hikaleo sent a 0-2 with zero points. Block B, we have Kazuchiko Okada, 2-0, oh, four points. Same with Taichi, surprisingly. Yoshihashi, record of running one, two points. Tagaloa, record of one and one, two points. Same with Will Osprey Kenta. Surprisingly, once again, Great Okan with a record of 0-2 and, and 0 points. Then running out this block, El Phantasma, 0-2 with 0 points. Block C, C block. Dave Finlay, 4-0, 2 points. Same with Evil. They're both tied at the top. Hanari, Eddie Kingston, Mikey Nichols, Tama Tonga all are at a tie. Both of them having, all of them having a record of 1-1 one and, one and 2 points. And then we have Tomohiro Ishii and Shingo Takagi, both surprisingly with a record of 2 points, closing out that block. But then a D block. We got a tie up the top. Zack Sabre Jr. and Jeff Cobb, both with a record of 2-0, oh, four points. Shane Haste, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Hiroki Goto, Tetsuya Naito, all with a record of 1-1, one one, equaling two points. And Alex Coughlin and Toriano with a record of 0-2, oh, equaling, of course, zero points. So, yeah, there will be more action taking place for us as far as the G1 Climax goes coming up on, I believe, Friday. Let me go ahead and see what that main event is on Friday, and just to kind of look at the card as a whole, I guess, let's see, we got Yoshihashi versus Tangaloa, I guess I'll just go through a rapid fire, just pick, pick them session, I'm gonna say Yoshihashi, all right, so next match we had, we had Block A action, Renderita taking on Gabriel Kidd, I'm gonna say that Renderita gets his first victory right here, getting a W, then we have a battle of someone's O has to go. The O and two L Phantasma taking on the Great Okan and B Block action. Damn, I hate the both these one of these guys got to lose because I I hate to see one of these guys start off on three. But I'm gonna say Okan gets the victory and L Phantasma starts off on three. Next we have Hikaleo taking on Chase Owens in a Block A match. I'm gonna go ahead and side with Hikaleo right here. Block B actually got Kenta taking on Will Ospreay. Can you imagine this match happened in like 2010? That'd have been fucking insane because we would have had a totally different Kenta. Uh, I got Will Ospreay winning this right here. He's the current United States champion. He has to kind of look sort of strong here. Then we, oh gosh, then the penultimate penultimate match. We got Shota Amino taking on Kaito Kiyomiya. Hmm, that's, that's a, I'm, I'm going with Kaito Kiyomiya. Even though it would make sense if New Japan had their guy win, I'm still going with Kaito Kiyomiya here. And then a face off of two of the guys who are at the top of the block, both undefeated, that being Okada taking on Taichi in block B action. And in the main event, a match we just recently seen at Dominion for the world heavyweight title, we have, we're going to have Sonata taking on Yoda Suji in block A action. So stay strapped in, stay tuned in, stay tapped in to SOS Wrestle Talk with all this G1 Climax action. We'll have it to you fast, hot, in a hurry, man. Put it on your plate, get you a couple servings, man, and get full on it, baby. So... I'm going to sign up out of here. It's the, your boy, 
Blunt to Unido, aka Pro Wrestling Fly Guy, aka Stardust Yaku, talking about G1 Climax 33, day three and day four, getting ready for day five. So yeah, I'm signing off, man. I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Peace.